Members, the uh, Senate will convene. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Honested, Alquist, Ashburn, Calderon, Cedillo, Cogdell, Corbett, Correa, Cox, Denham, DeSaunier, Duchenne, Dutton, Flores, Hancock, Harmon, Hollingsworth, Huff, Kehoe, Leno, Lou, Lowenthal, Maldonado, Negrete McLeod, Oropesa, Padilla, Pavley, Price, Romero, Runner, Semidian, Steinberg, Strickland, Walters, Wiggins, Wolk, Wright, Weiland, Yee. Mr. President, a quorum is present. Members, a quorum is present, and would the members and guests be on the rail and the gallery please rise? We'll be led in prayer this morning by our chaplain, Rabbi Mona Elfie, after which please remain standing, and we will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance today by Senator Padilla. Good morning. For those of us who live in California, who have felt the earth under our feet move and shift, who have experienced the fear and uncertainty in the aftermath of an earthquake, our hearts go out to our brothers and sisters in Haiti who are suffering. For those of us who have relatives who live far away and know how hard it is to watch and wonder from a distance what is going on in another part of the world, our hearts go out to those who still do not know who is safe and who is not. For those of us who mourn when we see human life lost or suffering, our hearts turn towards God in prayer. We pray for the residents of Haiti and their loved ones as they struggle in the aftermath of this tragedy that has struck their home. May the Holy One grant the relief workers skill and speed in bringing healing and recovery and grant protection to them in their dangerous work. May we be partners with our Creator in bringing the people of Haiti healing and peace, security and stability in this difficult time. May this be God's will. Amen. Amen. Members, we're on privileges of the floor. Uh, would any member like to uh, speak at this time? Right. Members, uh, motions and resolutions and notices. Seeing hearing none, we're going to uh, go to introduction of the first reading of bills. Mr. Secretary, will you please read? Senate Bill 882 by Senator Corbett, an act relating to tobacco and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Members, we're moving on to second reading. Will the uh, Secretary please read? Senate Bill 189 with amendments, Senate Bill 438 with amendments, Senate Bill 356, Senate Bill 194, Senate Bill 694. Members, we're moving on to item 72. Senator Steinberg is recognized under, at his desk for gubernatorial appointments. Will the Secretary please read? Thank you. Senator Steinberg. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. This is the confirmation of James Ostrowski as a member of the California Board of Forestry. Mr. Ostrowski was heard in the Rules Committee yesterday and approved on a four to nothing vote. Senator Onestead uh, was ill and was not uh, there yesterday. This appointee represents the forest products industry on the board. We make this recommendation for confirmation, frankly, with some reservation, because it took the board nine long years to adopt rules about how logging practices impact salmon restoration. We had a lot of discussion about Mr. Strowski and whether he is committed to uh, an, aggressive, an aggressive plan to protect our salmon resources. Uh, and in the end, um, I'm comfortable recommending a yes vote, certainly in the spirit uh, of compromise. I also look forward to the governor making an appointment to what is now a vacant slot for the public member uh, on this board, and I hope that that happens soon. I ask for an I vote. 
Members, any debate or discussion? Seeing hearing none, would the secretary please call the roll. Honestad? Aye. Alquist? Ashburn? Aye. Aye. Calderon? Aye. Aye. Cedillo? Cogdill? Aye. Corbett? Aye. Correa? Aye. Aye. Cox? Aye. Denham? Desaunier? Aye. Aye. Duchenne? Dutton? Aye. Aye. Flores? Aye. Aye. Hancock? Harmon? Aye. Aye. Hollingsworth? Aye. Huff? Aye. Kehoe? Aye. Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Lou? Aye. Lowenthal? Aye. Maldonado? Negretta McLeod? Aye. Oropesa? Padilla? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Aye. Price? Romero? Aye. Aye. Runner? Aye. 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 Smidian? Steinberg? Aye. Strickland? Aye. Aye. Walters? Aye. Aye. Wiggins? Aye. Aye. Wolk? Aye. Aye. Wright? Aye. Aye. Wyland? Aye. Aye. Ye. Aye. Ye. Ye. Aye. Aye. Cedillo Aye. Aye. Duchenne? Aye. Aye. Ayes 32. Noes 0. The appointment is approved. Thank you, Senator Steinberg. Members, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Senator Runner. I'd like to recognize Senator Runner um, at his desk. Senator Runner. Thank you, members. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. This is incredibly difficult. Um, as you're all very much well aware, <clears throat> we lost a good friend this week. Fourteen years ago, I came up here as a new legislator and uh, did the normal hiring that we always do as we first get up here, meeting people we've never known before. And I had a young man come and apply for an office, apply for a job, and that's where I first met Will. We were incredibly impressed with his life balance with his commitments, with his zeal, with his passion. So uh, we hired Will as our, one of our ledge staff members. Over the time, he quickly became then my chief of staff. And then when I was termed out, he then went over and became Sharon's chief of staff. And then when I returned back to the Senate, he returned back to me under much protest from my wife. And during that time, he became a first a staff member, then a friend, a brother. He died on a basketball court on Monday night. And it's been interesting to me through this last few days to hear many of you talk not only about your basketball experience with him, but also your children's basketball experience with him because he coached a lot of your kids. He died very suddenly. Um, went down, never got up, never regained consciousness. There was help there immediately, but it just wasn't to be. As I thought about some thoughts about Will, and certainly for many of us, we've been doing that. There are aspects of his life that just, just are banners to me. He was a man of great humility, a man of great passion, and a, great, a man of great compassion. There's a lot of people in this building, in terms of his humility, that have been mentored by Will Smith. Uh, it was always incredible to me, and as you think about it, somebody who's been here for 14 years in this building, a chief of staff for probably 12 of that, uh, you know, you can get caught up in a lot of important stuff and kind of let that other stuff slide and let somebody else take care of those interns or those fellows. But one of Will's most diligent efforts was to recruit fine young minds to come into this process. And he spent time doing that. So many, many people in this building know and have been touched by that. 
You know, humility was one thing too. You know, he was never one to take credit. Always behind the scenes, always working very hard. And as we would move sometimes from offices to places, you know, and again, somebody who's been in office, chief of staff for numbers of years, you know, might try to figure out which office they deserve. Now, Will, he'd figure out where to put everybody else, and then he'd just kind of figure out where he needed to be that made the most sense to him and to everybody else. His compassion was not a compassion that he had to feel like somebody else or we all owed a compassion to people who were in need. It was a personal compassion. It was a compassion made up of what he needed to do, what his family needed to do for others. <clears throat> He's been struggling over the last, he and Anissa have been struggling over the last couple of years, three or four, uh, because they wanted to adopt to the foster care system. And they've been struggling and had placement and disappointment, and it was been a very hard time. But they finally, finally got things worked out, and it was a foreign adoption. It was out of an orphanage in, in the Philippines. And there's a little two-year-old girl that they were going to be flying over to get here in the next few weeks that they were going to bring into their family. A girl who had physical difficulties, but they wanted to meet her need. That's the kind of compassion that we'll have. It was, sometimes we can get wrapped up in the compassion for everybody. But Will understood compassion was one person at a time, helping one person. And that's truly what they wanted to do. He was also a person of great passion. And I think of passion, I think of his passion, first of all, for policy. Will was a person who knew what he believed and wanted to see it lived out in both law and efforts here in the Capitol. He understood well his role and what he could do to help influence that. He was passionate about those issues. But, you know, the interesting thing about Will, he was a man of great balance. So that passion was divided amongst that passion for this building, his passion for his family, and his passion for his faith. I can remember... In Again, that passion for policy to always be there and always be with me and always supportive and giving me thoughts and ideas and even some of the things we're going to be doing this year. The things that he brought to us that he felt needed to be done. His passion for his family, I, one of my ongoing memories this week of Will has been uh, times we'd come up to, we have a little forest service cabin that we oftentimes can bring friends and people up. Uh, a lot of staff have been there and I can remember them unloading themselves out of their suburban. He has four kids, and, uh, and so they had a big car to help move themselves around. And, and uh, I can remember them jumping out of that car, and they'd immediately take off into the forest. Will would take the lead, and he'd be followed by his four kids. And sometime later, they'd all be coming back in talking about their adventures that they had. He was just that kind of guy. He just Everything he did, he just did with life and gusto. But he was also a man of great passion for his faith. And I can remember one day, oh, probably a couple times even, being down here in the middle of the night, working on some issue that we had to be working on, and Will up in staff and up in the office. And I'd walk in, and he'd be there in the midst of, again, one of those interns, one of those fellows, and they'd be talking about what I kind of think are the most important things of life. The issues of faith and of eternity. And I thought, oftentimes st stressed my head and thought, how trivial the things we deal with sometimes. And how impressed I was that he was taking his time to talk about things that are eternal. It's been a very tough week for us, for many of you, for lots of his friends, for all of his family. But it is his faith that gives us security into where Will is. So we rejoice with Will. But at the same time, we as friends and family, we hurt. We miss him. I got to tell you, as I sit in my office and look out, it's kind of like, when's Will getting back? Thinking he's away for a few days. And then again, reality hits. Well, I want you to continue to remember and 
and pray for Anissa and for Lydia and for Joshua, for Julia and for Caleb. Kids from about 14 to 8. The service is going to be at Arcade Church in, in uh, Carmichael, 11 o'clock on, on Saturday. We've had a great outpouring for many, many of you from the third house who loved him and want to do whatever they can. So uh, I thank you. I thank you for giving me this time, and I would just ask maybe uh, if we could just take a moment of silence. I know maybe others may want to share a little bit, but after that, if we could just have a moment of silence for our good friend, committed patriot, wonderful father, Will Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Runner. We will take that moment of silence uh, after all speakers. Senator Hollingsworth. Thank you, Mr. President. And Senators, uh, uh, it would not be appropriate for me to add uh, too much uh, to the eloquent words of Senator Runner and his long relationship with Will Smith, except on the behalf of the Republican caucus to say that uh, um, he is someone that I think throughout this entire building, uh, it's become very apparent in the last few days, had a tremendous impact uh, with everyone he came in contact with. He, as George said, spent time with them, his most valuable resource, <clears throat> and affected so many lives. And uh, many of us will miss his presence uh, right here on the floor as members turning around and seeing uh, the face almost always, even in the dark of night, <coughs> having a smile, having a smile on his face. Um, well, he will be tremendously missed. We too rejoice uh, knowing and admiring the strength of his wife who in the middle of the night penned an unbelievable email to family and to friends about their security that he was in heaven with Christ, and on behalf of the Senate caucus, we, uh, we will miss him. I know we will all miss him. Uh, we certainly thank uh, everyone in the Senate who's been so gracious and so accommodating and, uh, to his family and to his children in making sure that they are taken care of. It has been a, a tremendous uh, reflection of the character of so many people. Uh, in the way they responded to his loss. Thank you, Senator Hollingsworth. Senator Steinberg. <clears throat> Thank you, members. Thank you, Senator Hollingsworth and Senator Runner for your eloquence in describing a friend and a, and a fellow public servant. Uh, our hearts go out to his family. Our hearts go out to you. And I want to thank you for reminding us all here about how precious life is and how easy it is to go about our daily business, which is often, especially here, a contentious business, and, and, and how easy it is to forget the importance of human beings in relationships. And, and you remind me, and I think you remind all of us, um, as we go through uh, our day, and as we go through our year, and as we grapple with what we grapple with, it's always important, one, to uh, not judge people too harshly, to stop and uh, inquire about what's going on in somebody's life, and to give people the benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> because we're all human beings, and you remind us of that today, and um, thank you for that. We're very sorry, and we stand with you as a family, and we are a family in, in many respects. We stand together as a family uh, to support Will's family and to support those of you who, who knew him so well and who loved him uh, in whatever way we can. Thank you, Senator Steinberg. Members, if you could stand and we'll please take a moment of silence for Will Smith.
Thank you, members. Senator Corbett. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, today is indeed a very sad day, and um, my heart goes out to Senator Runner and the Smith family as well. Um, I also have an adjournment in memory. I would like to adjourn in the memory of uh, Ben Tarber. He was a wonderful resident of the city of Pleasanton and a former mayor. Served for eight years as mayor in Pleasanton and for 20 years as a devoted civic leader. Uh, he was um, an individual of profound understanding, strength, and patience, and was always ready to extend his hand of friendship. His love of family was well known, and uh, of course, he very much loved his community, and that was very evident in the way he conducted his life. Um, he died this past week, sadly. He had moved to paradise. He had suffered a stroke, which he was recovering from, but unfortunately, uh, we lost him. He was best known for his advocacy for open space and his concern for the environment. And his memory will stand um, uh, very much uh, for, for how he conducted his life. Uh, he will, he is, uh, we, our hearts go out to his family, his wife Jenny, his children Tiffany, Benjamin, and Melanie, and of course his beloved community of Pleasanton. And I ask that we adjourn in his memory. Thank you, Senator Corbett. And Mr. President, I have one note. I know it is a very sad day, but as the pro tem mentioned, we're very much a family. And so I just wanted to call attention of this body to a very important uh, day in my life and my son's life. Many of you have had the opportunity to see my son Ryan grow up here at the state capitol. And today is his 18th birthday, and I would like to wish him a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to Ryan. Thank you, Senator Corbett. 18 already. Wow. Okay. Senator Lowenthal. I, ri I rise to adjourn in the memory of Admiral John Higginson. Admiral Higginson died this past Tuesday. He had an illustrious naval career. His last assignment was in, I think it was from 1986 to 1990, where he became the, uh, came to Long Beach for the Na Long Beach Naval Station. After, but it's really after Admiral Higginson died that I would like to really talk about. For the last 20 years, Admiral Higginson has been a tremendous community activist resource for our community. 1990, he became the president of the, 1992, the president of the local chamber of commerce. In 1994, he was honored as the Long Beach Man of the Year, and then two years later, he and his wife were selected by the California Conference for Equality and Justice as their Humanitarians of the Year. Subsequent to that, over the years, he helped to support and spent the last 20 years uh, being the head of the board and working for uh, affordable housing for seniors, elders, and veterans from the, from the military. He was on the board also of the, uh, the Light of the Opera, the Boy Scouts of America, the Long Beach City College Foundation, the Trustees of St. Mary Hospital, and the Long Beach Symphony. So you can see that he touched every aspect of our community. I want to send condolences to his wife and to his children and ask us to adjourn in his memory. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lowenthal. Senator Corbett. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, on condition of file, uh, we all have been watching the last few days uh, the terrible tragedy of a 7.0 earthquake uh, in Haiti in Port-au-Prince. And I just wanted to call the members' attention to that. Our, our hearts obviously go out to the community and as we watch in horror of the you know, the great devastation an earthquake uh, can, can create. Um, as we know, um, our president has pledged his full support, and we all know that uh, emergency efforts are in full swing to do what can be done to save those that still uh, are lost um, in the rubble of the devastation of the earthquake and many, many um, 
you know, emergency efforts and relief efforts are underway. Um, I know that we will be informed of those uh, ways with, that we can be helpful um, in assisting those, our, our brothers and sisters in Haiti, and I just wanted to call attention to that and uh, so that the Senate um, joins with the President and all others in um, our concern for the people of Haiti and uh, pledging our support as well for everything we can do to help them. Members, any other items come before the Senate? Seeing hearing none, the business of the Senate is concluded. Senator Steinberg, the desk is clear. Senator Hollingsworth. There'll be a uh, short Republican caucus in the uh, lounge in the coffee shop upon adjournment. Okay. Republican caucus uh, short and tall. upon adjournment. Senator Duchenne. Uh, upon adjournment of the Republican caucus, then budget committee will meet in 4203. Okay, the budget committee will meet. Senator Steinberg, the desk is clear. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I want to have a brief Democratic caucus as well, uh, right, after, right, right, right after the session. Uh, Monday, of course, is uh, Martin Luther King Day. A day on, not a day off, as they say. Hope everyone will be busy in their community celebrating the life of, uh, of Dr. King. And then Tuesday, Tuesday session at two o'clock, and we will uh, we'll go from there. Budget budget committee is meeting uh, at eleven o'clock. Wish everybody a, a very nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Steinberg. The Senate will now be in recess until three thirty, at which time the adjournment motion will be made. We will reconvene, as Senator Steinberg mentioned, Tuesday at two p.m. The Senate is now adjourned. <laughs>